Harry Klinger stood just outside the doorway to his domain at Broncos. He managed the business end, while Bull was the real face of the place. He was also head of security, and someone none of the patrons wanted to deal with. Bull had been his friend for years, and he trusted the man completely. They had had each other's backs often enough, and he had no doubt they would again. A friend, no, brother, like that, was worth more than gold, in Harry's opinion. We've got trouble, Bull said, as he somehow materialized next to him. Harry had no idea how a man as huge and distinctive as Bull could possibly go anywhere unnoticed, but he managed to pull it off quite often. Harry turned and followed Bull's gaze. At first, he wasn't sure what he was looking at. It was a table crowded with men, like every other one in the packed club. The music pounded and throbbed through the seductively lit space, the energy of the place pulsing through him. That was what he loved about this business, the energy and vitality he felt when he was out here. Watch the man at the far side of the table, Bull said. Harry turned, taking his gaze off the place. It always seemed to wander of its own accord. For almost two years now, he had watched Bull's partner's friend, Tristan, one of the fabulous four, as he thought of them. What am I looking for? He asked absently. Just watch. Harry shifted so he could see better across the crowded club and noticed a man he hadn't seen before. Dark hair, eyes, and beard, smoldering good looks. If Harry were closer, maybe seated at that table, he figured he'd smell the raw scent of masculine sexuality over the alcohol, sweat, smoke, and musk that pervaded the club. Harry pushed that out of his companionship, gratification, and love-starved brain and returned to the task at hand. Men shifted around the table, almost like the dance the men did on the floor of the club. It wasn't until one of the men on the right side moved back for a few seconds that Harry saw what Bull meant. The man on the left side of the dark-haired man at the center clasped his hand. Harry knew in that instant what he was seeing. Money was placed in the dark-haired man's hand, and the hand disappeared under the table. He couldn't see it, but he knew what was going on. The hand reappeared again, another touch, and then the man moved away and another took his place. What do you want to do? Harry asked. He needs to go and be taught a lesson. I know. Bull stepped forward, and Harry placed his hand on his shoulder to stop him. Tristan approached the table. What the hell is he doing? Harry asked Bull. Do you think he knows him? Fury rose inside to the point he could barely think. I wonder if that guy is some associate of that scumbag ex of his. Tristan approached the table, but didn't sit down, which was a relief. He stood at the end, partially blocking Harry's view. I'm going to break this up and put the fear of God into that bastard, Bull said. He took two steps, just as Bull's partner, Zack, made his way over to Tristan. Bull stopped, and Harry heard him swear under his breath. Zack and Bull were inseparable, and Harry saw the tension in Bull's body ramp up to unbelievable heights. Bull would move heaven and earth to protect Zack. He'd done it before. Zack took Tristan's arm and pulled him away. He turned and appeared to say something. The swarthy man's expression changed to a lusty leer, and Bull was halfway across the floor before Harry could say a word. He followed behind Bull, signaling to the other bouncers that they had better get their asses over there. Bull was usually cool-headed and generally thought things through, but when it came to Zack, he was as growly as hell and could be vicious if he thought anyone would hurt the man he loved more than life itself. Zack moved away from the table, with Tristan in tow, as Harry hurried to catch up with Bull. The big man stormed toward the table, the tide of men in the club parting like the Red Sea. Excuse me, Bull boomed over the music as he reached the edge of the table. Can I help you? The Hispanic-looking man asked as he leaned back, looking completely unconcerned. This guy was either really cocky or as stupid as they came. Bull leaned over the table and grabbed the men to either side of the man, lifted them off their seats, and pulled them away. You two, get out of the club now, before I take you out of here in a trash can. Bull's growl stopped both of them from reacting. It's all right. He and I will just have a little talk.